welcome back ladies and gentlemen now it's the time for which we all were keenly waiting for i now request dr shrijit nanakutan sir a international expert with demonstrated credential in teaching research consultancy and training who will be the key person for these five days gyan course on whole life management concrete structures theory to practice which is a potential area of concern and need to be well addressed at this point of time we are entering into the first technical session today which is based on life cycle management of structures introduction hope you all enjoy the benefit of these five days sir stage is all for you right so throughout the lecture my voice will drop which is good not a bad thing so what you should do is if you can't hear me at any stage just just ask a question or pretend to ask a question or just raise your hand to say something and i'll i'll change my my tone so i wanted to say something about life something about life in in belfast life in northern ireland before we move into the topic because that gives you a perspective of of me as a whole <coughs> as compared to just learning the topic we we will work the technology as we as we progress um, okay while they get the uh, while they get the technical stuff sorted i will show you the life in uh, in, in university and um, queen's university is just like any other university they're very focused on recording it so i need to be careful <laughs> they're very focused on performance and uh, we have we have performance requirement in different line of research and income and teaching and quality and, and impact that's the last word is very critical so we're looking at impact that we can make to the local society as well as to the international society so the work that i'm doing here the points would be considering that as impact okay. so what they require is that the research that we do in the university is taken out to the to the society as fast as we can and they have a lot of mechanism in place for us to take that so whether that's a short medium like a short medium enterprise a business enterprise or if it is a societal organization or a charity the university is very good in encouraging us to take part in all of that and the and the large part of it they do fund a lot of our activities as well but besides that i wanted to show something about queens unlike the close university that you see here queens is an open university in the sense that all the all the buildings are across the different streets so public does live in between us and everything is kind of openly provided so that's the main university building and only administration and meetings happen there i didn't say we're quite business oriented so uh, it's it's mainly used for it's it's a venue it's a classic venue obviously weddings would like to to happen there and that's the uh, the courtyard this is our students union students get the best facility here and um, and that's us the civil engineering block it looks like a looks like a pentagon but yeah um, but civil looking back at the history civil started in 1850 and um, along with when the university started but then civil was part of physics so civil and physics were together as a single department and it shows you the origins of civil engineering as well because physics was a large part of our our curriculum and it was taught jointly anyway and since then science obviously developed further and further they now by a uh, prime position in the university but engineering is the largest uh, income provider for the university so we've been investing heavily in the in the campus and in, in student experience and the course that i'm talking about the whole life management university is very keen to look at student and the student experience as a, as a holistic experience because they, they're quite aware that these students are the ones who progress and become alumni in the, in the future as well as change the different aspects of the society so from from day one we're very keen to make sure that student experience is a start of the university the other part and the other driver to that is it is a business but do you look at it that way or not it is a business and the student decide to work study with us 
which means we need to be giving them something that the others can. Everything that you see is part of that uh, part of that holistic view. So this is our graduation hall. It is a pristine ceremony and worth attending, and worth graduating for. It's some of our some of the pictures across the university. And um, I did say we look quite a lot in the performance, and we require that from the students as well. So this is a student-made uh, racing car. The mechanical students have to make it, and they have to race it. And they get to drive. One of them will get to drive. So I'm sure in a group of five, it'll be quite a a competition going on and they, they make two or three and then they test it out in the university has uh, you can request the tracks from outside and then there's a university wide event in, in the UK somewhere in Birmingham so that's that this is uh, civil engineering research that went into full scale production now it's, uh, it's already working yes it's been working for the last 10 years the reason I paused it, it might be withdrawn by the time because we were looking only 10 years exposure. And then the, it looks like a fan, but what it does is we have a very peculiar lake or, or bay where the seawater comes in in the morning and seawater recedes in the evening. Uh, it's a very set that comes in the morning and goes back in the evening. So the flow is certain. So they wanted to put a turbine in there to generate the electricity. But those who know the turbine technology, so water is coming in in the morning and going back in the afternoon. So how does it work? If water comes in in one direction, it's great, it's easy. Just like a fan, you need one direction yeah, and the blades to be. Hmm? Yeah. yeah, just like a ceiling fan. So you can tilt the angle of the blades, rotate them. But if the water goes in two directions, how does the, how does it work? We heard of Wells turbine. So Professor Wells was one of Queen's alumni, and uh, well, it's a bit more anyway. But he created a turbine blade shape which will rotate only in one direction. No matter which direction you force it, it will only rotate in one direction. So by designing that, and by designing the blades in that way, that means no matter which way the tide works, it will only rotate in one direction. So you can create electricity in a bit, a bit more realistic fashion and a bit more faster. So many of that technology is thereafter applied in different energy generation devices. That's entirely our civil engineering department working on it. And this is a prototype they developed 20 years ago. It takes five years to go it into practice. Now it's being withdrawn anyway. And they also have other devices where the water comes in, the wave comes in, and moves the paddle, and that pushes the air through a tube and rotates the turbine. So you can install that in the ocean as well. So all these research are carried out by undergraduate students, and it goes to masters and PhDs and several postdocs and millions of pounds later, you get a, get a product. I'm just trying to show you the evolution. This, these are two different student accommodations. That's back to the university, and that's our very brand new library. Library facility is the best in the, in, I would say it's best in that part of the country, because then they wanted to invest quite heavily in the library so that it can remain open 24 hours. So the students can swipe the card, come in, and work there. It's very, it's a national, uh, it's a nationally important site. It's called Chinese Causeway. You might have seen some of the pictures of this. These stones are naturally formed. It's not concrete. And it's a geological formation because of the rapid cooling of the molten stone. And the crystal structure comes out in large structure. That's what you're seeing. And it's all over. It looks like columns to be kept. So, different parts of Belfast to give you an idea. And we're part of Ireland. We are. Part of UK, but we're also part of, uh, part of Ireland as well, which means the uh, the culture is quite heavily pub oriented, and food and everything. There's a lot of infrastructure on around sports, which is very critical. Because again, I'm going back to the same wording: it's holistic. So we look at student experience as well as staff experience. It's very holistic. 
that's just to give you an idea of where, where I'm from. Now we're going to move into the topic of whole life cycle management of structure. So the wording life cycle or whole life, they're interchangeable. And he's looking at the service life, which is 50 or 120 years, or service life for human being, let's say it could be 100 years. <clears throat> so life cycle management of structures means you're looking at structures from the inception stage when you have the idea in your head, all the way down to when the structure is no more there. Decommission, whether it's demolition, whatever. So when you can look at that lifespan and design it for that lifespan, job's done. Okay. And you know how hard it is to recycle. <coughs> Hard to recycle concrete? Harder than steel? Yes, it is. Yes. It's easy to put together, but it is very hard to recycle it. I'm not saying it's impossible. I mean, the technology exists for recycling, but it needs investment, it needs time, it needs resources. So, this is the only portion where I'm going to talk about steel structures as well, or I'm going to move into steel a little bit, because quite often structures could be both steel and concrete. And I'm not talking about the reinforcement steel, I'm talking about structural steel. So, in the UK, and I'm saying that very deliberately, but I'm sure in the UK context also resonates here, the pre-construction cost of a structure, assume that's the total pre-construction cost, could be 200,000, could be 100,000, it's equal to one crore here. Could be let's say 200,000, so it's two crores for pre construction. So that includes your conception of the idea, getting designers to draw it up, architects getting involved to, to design it, and tender and everything. Okay. You might see that tender doesn't cost, it's the government department. That's not true. Somebody's working on this massive document to get it to best shape. There's a lot of people looking at it, reviewing it, all their time costs. So that's the pre-construction cost, and that is the actual construction cost, let's say. I'm trying to give you a scale, okay? How big do you think will be the maintenance cost? So up until now is a year, two years from pre-construction, the conceiving the idea to, to finishing the idea. So time is on this axis. How big do you think will be the maintenance cost for 50 years? That's it. Do you think it will be bigger than construction? You're aware of different structures that you're managing. Some of the structures, no, the maintenance cost will be low. Some of the structures, the maintenance cost will be absolutely high. Buildings, typically, the maintenance cost will be low. It will be hanging or whatever else. But structures or anything that's closer to the sea, you might see the stories differently. Anything close to an urban environment, you'll see that it's going to change quite a bit. So, case one is where we desire our structures lie, that the maintenance cost is low. Okay. But you know that's not the true scenario. Case two is where your inspection and maintenance cost is significantly high. Okay. So much so that if I say a bridge in the UK, constructed in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, took about, let's say, half a million to construct in today's money. By the time it's 50 years, we would have invested nearly 5 million in getting that structure to some decent shape. Okay. First of all, to do with the traffic. Clearly, in the 1960s, we were looking for a 40 ton maximum weight to load one lorries or two lorries in, in the road structure. Compared to now, the two lanes are still open, perfect. 40 ton lorries are there and there of us. The lorries can take up to 160 tons nowadays, special vehicles. But the frequency of the vehicles have changed. 40 ton lorry going occasionally is not a problem for any structure. 40 ton lorries going consistently, line after line, is an issue. And as the vehicle load increases, the vehicle load will definitely increase. Because the demand for transit is high, which means the vehicles will have more and more access and 
means their loading will actually be higher. They're not pulling loads. It's okay, man. Which means this is majority of our structures in the UK. I'm not the only person saying it, even the government is approving that that's, that's where it is. And I worked with the Roads Authority in Northern Ireland. We're dealing in different cases and different structures to see do they lie in case one or do they lie in case two. So what we figured out is things like culverts and uh, water structures, to try to take water away from it, quite often tend to be in case one. They're shielded from the external exposure. They're only exposed to water that's carrying them. Okay? But any other structure, like road bridges, for example, definitely are in case two. What more alarming to them is the sewage network. It's extreme end of case two, entirely. And any other agriculture environment, agriculture. So you can do anaerobic digesters. This is where all the cow dung goes in and biogas is produced. A lot of concrete has been used nowadays for the seal and tank. That's case two. And also, the service life is questionable these days. But if you're lucky, you get 20 years. That's, that's best. So a lot of more of our structures are now starting to fall into that category. That's the picture today. Okay. Is the CO2 concentration on their arm increasing or decreasing? Good. Good. Consensus. I'm sure the politicians don't agree, agree with that. But not in the UK anyway. They, there's two camps clearly. But the CO2 concentration has increased notably. That means all our buildings are now surrounded by more CO2. There's more chance for them to carbonate. The faster they will carbonate. And the worst part is the peaks of the temperature. So in summer, the temperature will peak in the UK. And in winter, we're expecting the winter to be harsher winter. So that peak means in winter, we will put more salt. And in summer, we will have more CO2. So that creates a new exposure environment for us. We, we have known that for a while now. It's the combined CO2 and fluoride environment. We've been working it for about 10 years now. And we know up to a certain time, combined is good because carbon dioxide will make the structure a bit more denser, which is good. But after that certain time is elapsed, elapsed things will go really fast. And when it goes really fast, it deterioration will be really, really fast. So, all I can say at this stage is the future remains uncertain on whether it will go faster deterioration or slower. But looking at the past, I can almost certainly say expect the worst. So those are the case one case two. I'm going to show you some examples. Um, I've removed the, uh, the location of the structure but left the name where the town is. Um, that's these are coast, coastal and hydraulic assets used for river and flooding and relief. So different structures are in different categories, but the essential part is this is a case one structure where they put the structure quite well. So the construction cost is significantly high. The maintenance cost for 50 years is a green one. It seems to be lower. So great. But you can see some of their structures tend to have higher maintenance partially because it was constructed before they were aware of the material technology. This also gives them a, a very bleak picture of the future because if, you, if you're a department and you get say half a million a year to maintain and to build new structures, a larger portion of that's going for repairs. So they don't have much money to build new things. And that's that's the fate, that's the future that we need to need to expect. So they were working with us to see what will the 50 years look like, what kind of investment plans they need to have. <coughs> Thereafter, it's very much an accountancy exercise. Because you're trying to convince the politicians or whoever to say oh, you need to be investing now. Everybody's saying that we need to be investing now, the economists will say.